Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your boy Awom Kenneth. And if you're new here, remember to subscribe to the channel. Like hit the subscribe button. Don't let it go to waste. Like don't waste the second. Hit it now. Okay. So let's get into the video. So this video is about businesses and I have to put a disclaimer here. I am not a successful business person. Although I can tell you things to not do um, or things you need to get in order to start your first business because I'm also in that range. I'm trying to like start a business too. So I can say I have seen things and I'm here to tell you some things. If Dangote is not doing that business, don't even try it. You know, don't, don't even yet try it. Give you 30% per month. I did mad. I let them come. Let me give them $12 billion. Yeah, would they give me 30% per month? Is your head well? You know, if that guy is not in that business, don't even try it. Don't even, don't even reason it. And you say that in call for X, just hold, keep it at a B. Like, let, forget about it. You're better off selling Fanta and Cook than wasting your money on Forex. You know, I'm not saying that Forex doesn't work, you know, but I'm not also going to say that Forex works, you know. So I'm just saying, ignore it. That's my advice. Ignore it and do something else. So basically, like people are trying to start businesses, like the whole ambitious thing, entrepreneurship thing. You know, not everybody wants a boss. Not everybody wants to be told what to do. That kind of thing. You want to allow, allow, spend it. You want to be on your private jet. You know, like me, I'm very lazy. As you guys can attest to this channel. Like this channel should be up, grown real far. But anyway, I'm so lazy that... It's also familiar with you too. So you, you everybody wants that quick cash. I'm not gonna sit down here and tell you that if someone dash me 10 million, I reject it. I'm gonna collect it and I won't I won't like I'll start calling the person sa sa. The person does any useless joke, I won't laugh. You know? So like everybody really wants that quick money, but let's be honest to ourselves here, like Desperation is not good and it's not gonna take you anywhere far, like you're not gonna go anywhere with it. If someone dashes you money, the high probability, the high probability is that that money is not going to last. It's going to vanish into thin air. Cause someone dash me ten m now, I buy like a new Mac laptop, I buy one car, I move into a house, I pay house rent, fuel expenses, upkeep, furnish the house. You know, money has finished now. You know, like money has finished, but I'm not saying I would do that if someone gives me 10 million. If someone gives me 10 million, put your phone's account, like straight up. I'm not trying to like prove to anybody I got money. Like I have, I have a beanie cap on my head right now, so you get the memo. But what I'm trying to say in this video is there are thorns and thorns of desperation out there. People are promising fantastic, fantastical, epic size investments and returns that is just unbelievable at this point okay so an example i'd like to tell you guys today would be an example of agriculture and i was supposedly hyped up about agriculture for a while and now i'm no longer hyped about it i'm sure there is a journey there to be explored but right now i i don't think i am interested in exploring it in a rush so I don't know if you guys know, right now they have sort of banned or temporarily banned the importation of maize in Nigeria. If you're like me, you should be shocked that we're importing maize in Nigeria and I just find it quite ridiculous to be honest because like we farm, like there are lands here. I do not understand why we import in maize, you get? so. I spent a lot of time talking with the farmer and he basically was very open and didn't tell me by the grace of God or give me some biblical, you know, explanations to explain away some things that science, physics and maths and economics could easily do without me having to pray. And with that, I was able to like get a full understanding and depth of what I was about to get into when it comes to agriculture. Like it sounds very fantastic on paper. You plant maize, people want maize, we eat maize every day. Um, the industry wants maize. You need maize to feed your poultry. You need maize to for, for fishery. You like you need maize for a lot of things. And it's yeah, a cash crop you get. 
notwithstanding, but like the intricacies and the processes in which you have to start that is a lot. And it's not something that is being hyped up. It's something that you just one day wake up in the business and be like, oh my God, what have I entered? You get? And it just really shines more lights on Nigerian stories and Nigerians telling their stories, especially like the successful ones, telling their stories of how they started and how they got there and how they also maintained their position at that level. You don't get a lot of stories without having appendages of, oh my God, God did that. I was at the office one day and I just got a call out of nowhere. You get people do not acknowledge that privilege and tons of luck and prayer, <laughs> no pun intended, you know, we stand in God. I needed for this thing. For example, you've seen a very successful farmer, but you've forgotten that his farmer, his um, pedigree is stacked up with like a hundred generations of farmers in his bloodline or something but you who your parents have all been like civil servants for like the longest of time haven't done there's no either of business or entrepreneurship in your bloodline you're trying to start first of all you don't have the land you don't have the space you don't know the intricacies something that would just come off of habits for the other guy you would have to watch tons and tons of videos on youtube right and first of all you don't have privileges that that guy has like the guy has a privilege of owning the land you get so you have to walk more i'm not saying it's impossible but i'm saying that the struggle you have to do to able to play catch up with the person that has privilege whether the person that has privilege is using it wisely or not playing catch up with that person is very hard and people don't really shine light on how hard that struggle is and what lessons to learn you get those. I think that's what that's what is more important. And again, if you want to start a business or any business or whatever, you don't have the privilege of someone pushing you or um, let's say something happens to that business, even though there's insurance. Sometimes in that business, where is your main capital? Where is the external capital you're going to go and plow from and fund that business again? A lot of people have backup capital or main capitals because for you to get into something, you need like consistent income coming into something, coming into you or your account before you can start experimenting about something else. So that's why you hear a lot of people say, don't just go leave. Make sure you have like enough capital, enough emergency funds, or just even stay in the business and just try to start up the second thing you want to start while you're still in that business. So the more emphasis should not even be on agriculture for me, it should be on getting that first thing that gives you some sort of consistency, right? Is it a salary job or is it like a family inherited business or something like that main thing that gives you consistency or let's say be let's say in a career you want to grow up, you want to move up in your career and you don't have someone that is calling your name in those secret rooms where names have been mentioned and contracts have been signed. Even if you're hard worker, it's not really gonna go far. I watched, I was privileged to see a video about a successful entrepreneur in Nigeria. And he said for him to even get his first start after business school was due to the fact that his dad was the gynecologist to the president of the country. And that's how he got a job, right? And not the fact that he went to Oxford, Cambridge and Harvard, you get those amazing credentials. They didn't really solidify his journey to getting that job he had to have some sort of privilege to get it because notwithstanding if you've been to all three ivy league schools or the best schools in the world there's also someone who has also done that you get so you need to have some certain luck and privilege and i feel like that is not really focused on and a lot of people just enter business without information so what i would say don't start a business without knowing the privileges that people have used to succeed in that business information research like a lot of successful people employ consultants to do market research before they partake into a certain kind of business so you that oh 
Mecca is doing well. Let's copy him. You get, you don't really know how a Mecca started. Maybe Mecca was losing money for like 10 years and he was able to lose that because of his brother Chinedu was giving him money. You get, but you just see the perception, the physical perception out there and you take it verbatim, like word for word, like fact. And the next thing, one month down the line, this business is hard. This business is a struggle. It's not, there's nothing in this business. You get, and I feel like that story is not being told to a lot of Nigerians. And a lot of Nigerians are being deceived. Anyway, that's what I have for you guys on this video. Stay tuned. See you in my next one. Bye, guys.